Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to the new year. We're in 2021, and I'm delighted that my first guest on this Travel Weekly webcast as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series is Gary Wilson of EasyJet Holiday. So, hello, Gary. How are you? Hi, Lucy. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, it's been very cool. I think the last time we spoke, isn't it? Oh, I know, a long, a long time ago. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are, of course, Gary, in lockdown three. Um, yeah. And I guess, you know, we, we might have seen this coming. I think that, that, you know, it was telegraphed that this could happen in January. Um, maybe just outline for us what that means for you as a tour operator. What, what impact has that had? What, what, you know, changes have you had to immediately make because of that? that I, mean, I, think, I, I think, you know, like, like everyone probably listening to this you know we've become very used to it now so you know it's not like lockdown one or even lockdown two where you know things came as a great surprise you know we had to kind of run around behind the scenes and make sure that we could do what what we could for our customers I, I think you know we've we've clearly just gone through the process again that we did in one and two you know we've we've looked out for the next few weeks we've you know cancelled down customers holidays um, we've given refunds where customers want them, rebook them where customers want to. Um, and really, it's just a case of keeping that communication going with our customers and, and giving them as much information as we have. But really, the customer has the same, the same kind of information we've got at this point. So I think it's just a case of ensuring that we're there and that, that, that the dialogue's going and that, you know, we're reassuring those customers that, you know, should those plans change, that, you know, they'll get their refund, they can rebook and that will be done automatically and very quickly. And, and, I think, and, how, and have people largely been at rebooking or have they now gone, oh, God, again, you know, well, you know oh, what? we just want our money back now? Or are you are you finding people are going, OK, we'll just push it on again a bit further? Yeah, a lot of them are pushing it on. And I think that, you know, it, it, it surprised me that, that, you know, we've got customers now who three, four times have said, OK, I'll go on and rebook. I mean, what, what we do is we give them that option. Do you want a refund or do you want a credit? And, and with the credit, it just sits in their account and then they go on the website and they can then redeem the, the holiday against that credit. And, and actually, most of the customers, that's, that's the process they've gone through at this point. They've just said, look, I'll just delay it till further on. And I think probably because the period that we're coming into um, with a February half term, we kind of find they'll move that February half term to May half term or okay, they'll yeah. move it the summer um so, so what we have seen this time is that customers have moved it further into the summer so into the kind of junes and julys um whereas before they would maybe move into kind of april and may okay so, so they've, they've been extra safe and just taken it that yeah, little bit further yeah, absolutely. okay absolutely. so 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 in that respect gary when you know i know no one's got a crystal ball and i know we're sort of told this will be this will sort of this lockdown might end in mid-february and perhaps that will drag a little bit but when do you really anticipate you know travel coming back in any sort of significant numbers are you thinking then more towards may half term onwards or do you think there'll be something significant around easter yeah i mean if i have my if i have my easy jet hat on as an airline then clearly it's a different dynamic and 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 there's a different customer type there that, that we would expect to start traveling um, as soon as the lockdown um, restrictions are lifted more than say the, 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 the traditional holiday customer and I think we have to we have to as an industry be optimistic for the summer you know and we have to think that post May half term that that we, we need to look to, to think that we'll get as normal as it possibly can be um I think we could pin our hopes that in Easter there will be some return and and plan around Easter but I think you know for nine months we've been doing that. I remember when we sat down in March, we said, well, mid-May, mid to end of May, things could pick up and we'd be back to normal by June. And then it moved to kind of July and August, then it moved to the October half term, then it moved to Christmas. And, and now we've moved the, the February half term. So I, I think Easter is the next kind of um, kind of landmark date and, and, and we need to see what we can get for Easter. But, but certainly I think that big mass travel in terms of the kind of summer really kicking in, I would imagine, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm as good a guess as anyone else's, but the kind of May half term seems to me to be the date that people will really start to think about, I think, travelling um, for the, for those summer holidays from them, because that that's when the summer season picks up anyway, as you yeah. start to pass these into May. Okay, all right. And, and just going back to what you said there about, um, well, we all were, weren't we? We, we never thought it was going to last this long, so we were all thinking about when it might sort of kick in again and, and restart. I mean, certainly... With the news of the vaccines coming sort of at late November and December, I think, you know, people were really feeling a bit more optimistic. 
you know, companies like yourselves, you know, put in place January campaigns. I want to talk to you about that because you're yeah. on television, you know, nice positive messages about people going on holiday. I mean, did, you know, that clearly hasn't quite materialized, I guess, the January you were wanting. I know it was never going to be a normal January, but has it has it really dented confidence now that we've had this, this these new restrictions? No, you know what? I mean, yeah, clearly, you know, a normal January period, we'd be seeing bigger demand than we're seeing at the moment. But I think we all anticipated that. I mean, I'm I'm I mean, I'm the most optimistic I've been since since the first lockdown. And I think everyone else probably should be, even though we're in a period of, of, of a bit of pessimism, you know, with the lockdown and what have you. But as you say, you know, that the vaccines are being rolled out. You know, there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know, to, to coin the famous phrase. And people can look at the summer and think, you know what, I will get away for this summer and I will be able to plan um, with much more surety. And I think that, that that's really the, the, the role of us as tour operators, as, as travel agents, you know, is to give customers that kind of platform of, of security in terms of the messaging we're giving them and, and just be really open and honest with them because they're getting as much information as, as we're getting and I think certainly the consensus would be that, that there is no reason that that the, the summer is not going to be a, a decent enough summer that feels a bit more like normality than what we've gone through for the, the last nine months. Now that said you would expect to be taking you know a huge amount of your bookings um, into the January period. I think we won't take as many bookings as we would clearly in, in in a normal turn of year but I think that just delays that that booking period through into February March and April when when we should see when we should see that happening and I think um I think we talked about in our year-end results when we were talking about the pent-up demand you know when they lifted the Canaries when they lifted Portugal you know you see these massive spikes yeah uh, in demand and searches so so that demand is is becoming more and more pent-up the longer this lasts so you okay. know I think we will see a big, big kind of opening of, of, of sales and, and demand as and when customers have that surety and start to see the signals of things going back to normality. Yeah, well, I want to come on and talk to you about demand because you will be seeing some trends now. I'd be fascinated to see what, what's coming mm. through. But before we move on from sort of messaging, you, you mentioned the messaging there and how important it is for you to get that across to customers, but also to agents. And you've had some great, um, you know, agent initiatives and incentives out for January. Um, you've got your commission uplift for the first part of January. You've got um, discounts that you're offering through agents. Yeah. You've got your draw, your weekly draw for agents to win money off a, an easy jet holiday. So, um, you know, t tell us about that, why you've put that in place. And also, if you think that this period is going to extend into February, March, are we likely to see more agent offers for the next couple of months and not just restricted to January? You know, what? I think when I last spoke to you in August, we were just launching um, to, to the trade and, and you know, we were we were excited about the opportunity that brand that, that that would bring. We were excited about you know it being another distribution channel for us. I, I, I mean, it's easy to say on this channel, oh, I've been blown away, but but I genuinely have been blown away by by the third party agents. I mean, I think on on two on two levels. Firstly, just the sheer resilience. I'm thinking, how are these guys going through this? You know, I know how difficult it is for us, but to have to shut your shop, then open, and then shut, and then um, and quite incredible and and just to continue motoring on you know it kind of shows and, and the level of sales that they're still managing to do yeah even that, though their doors are shut but yeah, they're doing them creatively it, in other ways it, it shows that real level of creativity but also i think the real loyalty that 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 customer base has um with with the travel agent and 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 therefore that's really really it's not taking me aback but it's really reassured me that the decision to go along with travel agent was absolutely the right one so i think that would be that that would be the first and, and the main thing and i think just the second thing is is really just the openness i think that that we've managed to have a dialogue um with with the trade you know I'm, i i said when we launched this you know we we don't pretend to know the answers here in terms of what's needed we will work with the trade to, to give them what they think they need in order to be able to sell and i'm really very very open to that and i'm i'm, I'm happy to have that dialogue with with people if, if they want to have it with me personally and, and what have they asked for then what have they, have they asked for anything specific i mean obviously everybody wants more commission and you've yeah you've done that but 
Well, I mean, the, the things I'm, I'm, I'm keen to talk to them about is, you know, from the local airport, you know, what are the kind of destinations they'd like to see? What are the kind of hotels? Are there any hotels or holidays that we don't currently feature they'd like to see? From a product point of view, you know, is our pricing right? You know, is there anything that worries them? Is there anything that, that they, they don't like? I mean, I think the feedback that we're getting is they love the range. They love the simplicity of the product. They love the, the price because the, the price is, 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 is really is really very very strong from an easyJet holidays perspective and and you know they, they just like the fact that there's an open dialogue there with them and that you know we're trying to help as much as we can for them to get the sales um, so when we talked about going into turn of year we, we we looked at the extra the extra two percent commission which we said look this this will be a, a kind of foot up to hopefully try to drive those sales that, that the trade would want and also just trying things like you know the the weekly draw as you say for the thousand pound credit for an easy jet holiday um and then the the the, the january sale of up to 300 pounds off um that, that we've launched as well so i'm very open to to as long as we can afford it and as long as you know we're, we're able to do that, that that we would continue having incentives and doing things that would drive those sales because frankly you know as I say, it's it's been a, a real kind of powerhouse in terms of the channel for us. I've been really, really reassured. By how you, sorry to interrupt you, Gary. Do, do, would you say that the do you think the pandemic has influenced how important the trade has been? I mean, I know we might never know because you launched and we were in a pandemic. But, you know, I know you were always saying agents would be part of it. But it sounds from what you're saying is that they have become a more important or a greater proportion of your sales than perhaps you were expecting and I know this is on reduced volumes than what we would have liked but do you, do you think the pandemic has, has pushed more people towards travel agents and therefore it become a more important channel for you? Well I think I think it's an important channel for us in that and I think I said before the, the EasyJet customer we've got a very loyal EasyJet customer um, who you know is it engages with us digitally on the website and we've got there and and that customer I don't think we've changed I don't think they've changed channel I think what we've managed to do is create a presence for a customer base that maybe we didn't have right. that the travel agents had a relationship with and it was those travel agents who's introduced us um, to those customers in that respect and I think that's what's been really really positive from our point of view and I think in terms of the agent's job during the pandemic what's become clear is having that personal service with someone that they yeah. trust that they can talk to that can give them that reassurance and help guide them through that has, has been really valuable for them. Yeah absolutely and I know when we first spoke I think it was when we were out in Japan actually at the ABTA convention mm. but you were saying that you you know you, you'll you'll look at the trade but you probably won't have massive sales teams or trade teams on the yeah. road of course no, no one got teams actually out on the road but they still have trade uh, sales teams is that something you would look at in the future or is it working as it is I know you've got you know a trade managers but yeah we've got we've got a small trade team and obviously we've got the the, the Sheffield call center that, that that are there for the trade um I mean I, I, again with with increased overhead comes increased prices and you know what we want to do is give the best prices for the the trade to be able to sell and give them the most commission that we're able to afford and and, and clearly you know if you continue to slice the cake then then your ability to be able to do that um, becomes more limited. I think where there is activity that adds value, of course, we're going to consider that. And, you know, I, I visited some bar head stores before the, the lockdown and I was speaking to some of the, the, the agents there and they were talking about, you know, educationals, for example, and yeah. and, and, and and I thought, well, fine, you know, I mean, we've got we've got many, many aircraft, you know, we've got many, many seats in relationship with hotels. If that really is is meaningful, then of course we would consider that. But what I won't do is is suddenly stand up a big team and and pay yeah. for a big overhead that's then going to impact the ability for me to be able to sell holidays at, at the price I want to sell them at. But I mean, I'm hoping in the next kind of three to four weeks to be able to have calls with a lot of the consortium and, and, and the big trade partners just to get feedback on you know what they see as work and what they'd like to see more of any suggestions and as I say really really open to, to, to any suggestions that they might have because the key to me is, is as I said these are incremental customers these aren't customers that that are choosing a different channel you know they're customers who are incremental to us and that's great. Okay which means you, which means you're probably taking business off someone else then that they would not they were they were going with before well potentially I mean I'd like to think that you know as I say with this pent-up demand I'd like to think there is a a huge amount of business are going to be available to to, to all of us given the, the reduced capacities as and when you know we see this confidence um coming out and yeah. I mean it's an it's an interesting point in terms of that taking the business piece because I think that 
I was reflecting on the whole kind of pandemic piece and, and how we've been as an industry. And I, I, I mean, it's interesting, obviously, because I sit kind of between aviation, being on the, the EasyJet board and, and then running a holidays business. And I, I do think there is, there is a, a point for reflection for all of us about how, as an industry, we've come together during this and had a voice. And I think probably it's been less, less um, successful maybe than the aviation industry was. And I think we need to think about that because... We, we like to we like to kind of throw throw punches at each other and stuff, don't we? As a as a travel industry, and I think you know this is a time for us to to really come together and stand united and really call for the same things. And I think, you, you mean aviation with tour operating? And, know, and with Abta, I think Abta's got yeah. a really big part to play in that. And I mean, I spoke. To and Mark. you sit on the board, don't you? Now, Abta, you're with. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not on the board, but you're, mem Abta. you're members of Abta. We, we, we joined Abta, and, and 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 clearly we have we have dialogue with them. And you know, I, I spoke to Mark before Christmas, and I think the role of Abta, I think going forward, is going to be really important that we all get behind behind that, and and we can speak with that singular voice. I think that's absolutely vital. Okay. All right. Well, you mentioned pent up demand, and you also mentioned that you're open to hearing more about product. So I'd like to just talk to you about you know what is uh, of interest to consumers out there at the minute? You know, are you seeing any sort of trends about, you know, where people want to go, durations they want to go for, you know, the types of people that are booking? What kind of trends are you seeing? Yeah, there? I mean, we've seen uh, Turkey is hugely popular. Turkey is, is by far the, the most popular destination that we're seeing at the moment in terms of the demand, um, as, as well as Spain. So, so when you look at, you know, when I look at the shape of the sales in terms of where people want to go, it's very similar to, 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 to previous years. Um, all inclusive, Turkey, um, Greece, Spain, they're, they're the biggies. I'm not seeing a big decrease in the number of nights that people are taking. I'm not seeing people trading down. Um, we're just seeing less in terms of the, the, the overall numbers booking. But in terms of what they're booking and what they're looking for, it seems to have fallen into the pattern of previous years. I know when the pandemic started, we saw a big kind of shift to self-catering. Um, yeah. People moving, there was almost a polarization rather than all inclusive or in self catering, and that that started to, to, to merge a lot more into into what looks like. Well, I mean, presume with the vaccine rollout, if people are booking once they think vaccines are sort well, of rolled out, yeah. they won't won't be worried about mixing so much, will yeah, they? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. And probably probably people are, are sick of spending the whole time indoors with their family, you know, and they're thinking it'd be quite nice to see some strangers, you know, to go on holiday and mix yeah. with other people at some point in the summer. <laughs> It's really weird, isn't it? It's come full circle. Um, just desperate to get out. Um, and what about the Brexit? I mean, you know, Brexit, you know, it's bizarre. We didn't talk about it for a year. Then it suddenly mm. became really kind of important, didn't it? Just over, you know, Christmas and New Year, we were racing towards the deadline and possibly no deal. We've got a deal. Does that have any impact on your business at all? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's very difficult to tell because, of course, there's so many other things in the mix. But I think certainly from our perspective in terms of preparedness, I mean, obviously, we've been prepared for a long, long time um, for, for, for any scenario and for a no-deal Brexit from that respect. So in terms of kind of changes to the operations and what have you, then there was, there was, there was no impact there um, because we were ready. But, I mean, I, I think you're right. It became suddenly very important for a few days. But I think the message was we've done a deal. And things can look very much like, like normal, you know, and, and I think as customers, you know, have seen that actually things seem to be quite, you know, normalised. We're not seeing, you know, these huge queues at, at, at Dover and at Calais oh, yeah. that we feared, then, then I think people are just going about their business um, as normal. So I don't think we're seeing any, any necessary material impact at all on it, no. Yeah, I, I think I was going to ask, I mean, in terms of, I mean, whether you're talking to agents or, or questions that you get on your own website directly, you know, what are the things that people are worried about? I mean, are they worried if they've got enough time on their passport? Are they worried about what you're doing in resort in terms of COVID, you know, um, compliance? You know, what, what are the things that people are mostly asking you, either through agents thing, or directly? Yeah, the big thing is just about, you know, I, I think they want to understand the flexibility and that, you know, if I book the holiday, yeah. you know, and it doesn't take place, you know, am I going to have to wait for weeks or, 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 you know, will I get my money back and what is the process there? And I think, you know, as an industry, we've done an enormous amount in the last nine months on that. And I think that customers can feel really reassured that, you know, if there are any impact on my holiday if it's if it's going to be changed then I'll automatically be offered that refund I'll have it within the 14 days or I'll be able to rebook a holiday so yeah. I think 
first one is really important to them, that their money's safe and that if they're, they're, there's a disruption to their holiday, then that's going to be safe. I think the second one is just th there is a lot of um, not confusion, but a lot of questions around the whole testing thing, you know. So, so you know, what is the difference between the antigen test, the lateral flow test and the PCR test? And why is one needed here and something else needed elsewhere? And am I going to need to have that test? And how do I go about doing it? Certainly over the Christmas period, a lot of customers were saying, well, will I get the results back in time um, because of yeah. the Christmas post in order for me to, you know, to, to be able to do that sort of thing. So there was a lot of concerns around that, I think. And, and does that put people off certain destinations, Gary? Because of course, what we might do leaving the country is different. You know, there's often different tests, isn't there, about going into certain countries and then leaving those countries. So you know, yeah. well, that put people on certain destinations. I mean, undoubtedly, the financial kind of um, impact that it has in terms of the cost, that that is, you know, no doubt that's going to be prohibitive to a number of customers. And yeah. if you think that, you know, I think it was about 120 quid, you know, when, when they started launching these. And the price has come down now to kind of 60, 65 pounds. But for a family of four, you're still talking about, you know, 200, 250 pounds. And now with this 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 new rule that you're going to have to be, uh, given the test coming back in, does that mean if you go for a fortnight's holiday, you have to pay to have the test going out and then you have to pay again to have the test to come back in? You know, so I think those questions are, are still need to be answered um, and customers need clarity around that. So, you know, I mean, we've been calling for a long, long time that there needs to be a, a coordinated European testing approach that is affordable. And, and from that, it should be maybe the kind of antigen test or the lamp test, mm. um, because they're very quick to administer. They're very quick for the results that they're, 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 they're that they're that they're a lot cheaper than the PCR tests, um, and and at least then that gives people certainty that they they understand exactly what they need, yeah. understand you know how to go about it. Because, yeah, because the industry's been calling for testing because it would then give people the confidence to get on a plane and go Correct. to a hotel. But as you're saying, it needs to be you know consistent across Europe and as you say affordable, so that it, it doesn't put people off. Correct. And, and, you know, places like, um, say, Madeira, when, when if, if you wanted to travel to Madeira, you, you, you could have the test on arrival or, or, or uh, that, that gave customers a lot of confidence that actually it wasn't that complex that they knew what to do. And therefore, that remained quite popular. And I think places where, you know, there was a lot more loops or, or, or to jump through in order to, 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 to go through that, that test regime, that, that put customers off. And, and of course it would. Um, and therefore, I just think having the the very consistent message across Europe is going to be really important. And I, and, and I welcome and how, Do you think we're close to that, though? I mean, I know it comes back to our lobbying and having that single yeah. voice. And so we are really heard and it's and it's powerful and it's effective. But do you think that's something, you know, because we've been calling for testing for 10 months. Yeah, and absolutely. Now are the government even sort of talking about that. Um, so are we going to be close to getting something that's Europe? I mean, you know what? I I. I a lot of European countries have put it in place and a lot of European countries, you know, seem to have got their, their act together on it and, and, and have a very clear, I mean, I think the Canaries just before the, the lockdown happened again, you know, that they, you know, they, they came out with the, the, the antigen test that were going to be acceptable. And, you know, that gave customers that reassurance that, that, you know, it's going to be quite easy to be able to go there and go about that process. So I think what we'll probably find is, is it going to be on a pan-European coordinated level? Possibly not. But will everyone else fall into line over a period? I, I think I think inevitably they have to because yeah. they have to think of their economies and they have to think what they need to do to restart those. Um, and it's going to be front and centre of mind of, of people who are relying or countries that are relying on tourism. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think it will, it will inevitably um, come together. Yeah. And other reports in the news um, today, I think, Gary, the people sort of saying even, or the government saying even, if the vaccines are rolled out, there will still be, and we are released from the restrictions we're currently in, there will still be some restrictions in place, possibly till next March. Yeah, so how yeah. does that sort of impact you as a business and what you're doing, you know, in resort, on your transfer coaches and, you know, on your aeroplanes? I mean, presumably this is not going to just go away completely, is it? Well, and, and to be honest with you, I don't think the customer, I think the customer would be more alarmed if it just went to May immediately. You know, I think yeah. if suddenly we all went to the supermarket tomorrow and no one was wearing masks and they said, that's fine. You think, well, I'm still wearing my mask. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's yeah. a 
I, I think there has been a shift in consciousness of customers anyway. And, and, and actually, to your point about what customers want to know about, they want that reassurance that there are, you know, there are COVID protocols and that these things are in place in hotels and in destinations. So I think it will be important even, you know, through the summer that customers see that this has still been taken very seriously, that yeah. safety is still front of mind and that that's absolutely being followed. And yeah. in the same way that we've just accepted now, you know, the, the, if, if you were to look at the whole airport protocol now versus, say, 15, 20 years ago, a customer 15, 20 years were like, are you kidding me? This is this is phenomenal. And actually, we just take it as normal now. That That is what the process you go through as you go through an airport. I, I think in terms of going to destinations, going on to aircraft, going into transfer coaches, staying in hotels, going into restaurants, I, I think there will be, a, dare I say, a new normal. Um, and that will be heightened in terms of that customer safety protocol, even if, you know, a lot of other restrictions are lifted. And in the same token that those things will probably stay for a while and we'll become used to them, will the extra flexibility that you guys, all tour operators have put in in order to, you know, reassure and give give customers confidence to book, do you think those extra, flex, you know, the, the extra flexibility around their, the protection of their money, et cetera, do you think that will stay as well? Or do you think over time you'll go back to normal in terms of changing your T's, T's and C's and cancellation yeah. dates and stuff? I hope I hope so. And I think it would be a real shame if it didn't stay, because it would be I, th I think I think it would be a real shame if you had to change that um, when actually the, the, the rationale for changing it to, to what it is at the moment is because it's the right thing to do for the customer. Yeah. Um, the right thing to do for the customer now. Why is it not the right thing to do for the customer in a normalized year? And but I it think does make it harder for you. It makes it surely it makes it harder for you. You've got you've now got you know policies in place where people can cancel really close to departure. You know it was obviously easier before if you had much more time to resell that holiday and all the rest of it. So I know I know what you're saying, but it is harder for tour operators to to operate that way. Of course, it makes it harder. But you know, um, you know, if 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 you you know, if, if you wanted to go into a trade or an industry, you know, that wasn't hard, then you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't go into tour operating. You know, there's, there's very, very difficult things all the time within tour operating and compromises you have to make. Uh, but that said, you know, customers don't book holidays in order to cancel them. They just don't, you know. Okay. And if the customer does need to cancel a holiday, then there's probably very good reason for it. And we just need to be making sure that, you know, that you're always on the side of the customer, that, that you know, we've learned a lot here, you know, Customers lost a lot of faith in the industry in the first few months of this, and it's taken that time to get that faith back. And I think that as an industry, we're, we're doing the right thing, and I just hope we can continue to do it. And yes, it's tough, and yes, it's difficult, but that's what's going to have to be, you know, as we go forward. You know, we've been through a lot of big changes within the industry where things have been introduced that have made our way of operating have to be rethought and, and, and kind of remapped and, and, and rebuilt. And, and I think this is just going to be another one. And I, I really do hope that, I mean, I certainly will do everything to make sure the protection promise that we have in place for customers, that that is something that becomes part of our normal going through um, um, after this. Absolutely. OK, that is fantastic to hear. And you say that, you know, this talk about restoring faith and it's you've worked really hard. Do you think as an industry we have restored faith or do you think there's we've done a bit, but there's still a way to go? I think we're getting there. Um, I, I do think we're getting there. And I think that, you know, that that I think a lot of the damage that was done early on, um, you know, the thing with I think the customer is very forgiving in terms of. They, they, they get the fact that, you know, when this happened the first time round, there, there was no kind of precedent in terms of the, yeah. the, the protocols or the processes for actually dealing with this on, on such a scale. Um, and, and you know yourself, I mean, if, 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 I, if, if I'm waiting for something to come, you know, by post and the Royal Mail say to me, oh, you know, it's an unprecedented time. I think you've had 10 months to sort this out, you know, just sort it out, please. You'd be annoyed, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, so I think that I think customers are thinking, you know what? I'm happy to give you it for the first few months. I'm happy to give you it whilst you're trying to put it in place. But, you know, now I'm not going to forgive you if, if, if you don't do this. And, and certainly from our point of view, I mean, we were very lucky because we didn't have the mass kind of customers that say yeah. airline had. We were able to do the refunds within 14 days. We were able to follow follow all of that through. And, and, and you know, we've continued to do that. And I think many more are doing that now. And I think we just have you got, have you got. Has this taught you, though, that you need to have systems in place? Because eventually you will have 
let's hope, really big volumes. And, you know, I guess we, we've all now got to be geared up that it, I, this could happen again. It could be a well, totally different disease and it could happen again. Yeah, and everyone now has the systems in place to deal with it. Yeah. You know, we've we've all designed that and we've all got the processes that we can deal with that now. And we've all learned the lessons of, you know, what you do when this happens. And, and when you have multiple failures across multiple channels, you know, how you then need to pick yourself up on that. And I think that, that those lessons, again, will carry through. Um, and, and I think we have all learned from it. So I think I think the point on have we totally restored faith in the, the industry, I, I think it's, it's a, a long way from where it was nine or 10 months ago. And I think we just need to continue to, to be on the customer side, continue to react very quickly when things change to customers' holidays and continue to be open and honest with customers. All right, brilliant. I'm conscious of your time, Gary, but before we go, and I know it's hard to probably even look beyond the, the week at the moment because things change mm -hmm. all the time. Um, clearly you're saying you're confident that we'll have some good numbers, let, you know, we'll have a good summer. Have you got any plans beyond that, you know, or is it literally just con consolidating where you are, getting a good number away for the summer, or what's the what? No, the you know, I mean, our, our, I, I think, I think, like everyone, you know, we've had we've had time in order to do a lot of this planning for the future. So I think many, certainly, we at Easter holidays, we've 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 put a lot of plans in. I mean, we've launched our our winter destinations and, and and they've proved very popular. Egypt's selling very well, Canaries are selling very well. Iceland is a, a huge hit that's selling really well. And we're preparing to launch um, next month, we will launch our summer 22 program. We've got a load of quite nice new innovative um, products that we're looking to bring in then and new destinations. And, and, and we're talking as well to the trade actually about from their local airports where they would like to see us flying to you know what kind of destinations they'd like to see and we'll look to try to introduce some of them and um, we'll be looking as well at some point this year i hope to be able to launch a new source market um, within europe um, as well as the uk so there's a lot of different things that we've we've put in place that we would be looking to do and, and, and i hope that we'll be able to to be able to do a lot of those things but absolutely not standing still. I can tell you're not going to give me any more than that in a minute. It would be pointless me asking because you're only going to give me top line. But can I at least get a promise that you'll come back on and uh, talk to me about that when you when you can, perhaps when you launch 22 and uh, some of the other things? For sure. I promise I'll come back on and I promise the background will be different because hopefully, hopefully we're back in the office and things will be a bit more back. Well, I know that maybe at one point we can actually have a sort of face, you know, a proper, proper meeting <laughs> rather than constantly over, over Zoom. But people do enjoy these and it's so kind of you to come on and give us your time today, no, Gary. All right. Well, thank you very much. We wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing how well things pick up again. Thank once. you. Thanks, Thanks very much to Gary okay. for the holiday.